All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to make a quick explanation on counter conditioning and systematic desensitization. Uh, this is obviously a, uh, a complex topic, so I'm going to make it as brief, concise, and to the point as I can. If you want a little bit more detail on this topic, make sure you go to doctoringismypassion.com, go to the virtual learning tab. I have a longer version of this video in there, along with the longer version of flooding. Um, and I also have other stuff from e-collar training to um, protection training and a bunch of stuff that you might be interested in. So anyways, let's get back into this video. So counter conditioning and systematic desensitization. To understand this video, you have to at least watch half of the video on classical conditioning. Okay? And to, to understand the video on classical conditioning and get a a broader idea of what I'm talking about, you should at least watch about half of the video on operant conditioning. Okay, I'm not going to try to bring you up to speed on this uh, because it would occupy too much time. So the way you should watch this series of videos for this video to make sense is watch operant conditioning, the video I made on operant conditioning, watch the video I made on classical conditioning, uh, watching the video on flooding also will help you out. And now this video on counter conditioning and systematic desensitization, this will make much more sense if you kind of watch it in that order. Okay, counter conditioning and systematic desensitization is a way to change associations that the animal has made. An association is when a dog or a, an animal pairs a stimulus with an experience, okay, or pairs a stimulus with a response. And this response is usually a bi biological response. And this biological response is usually an involuntary biological response, like sweating, shivering, um, dilation of the pupils, or trembling drooling, right? All these things, these are biological responses that are elicited because of the presence of a trigger. So these are associations that the animal makes. So how do we change association? Why would we even want to change an association? We would want to change associations that don't serve the animal. I'm going to give you an example. There are rational fears and there are irrational fears. If I'm standing six inches from the edge of a cliff, I should be terrified of that. That is a very rational fear. This is a fear that would save my life because if I had no fear of standing inches from the edge of a cliff, this could be detrimental to my health. An irrational fear would be if I'm standing 100 feet from the edge of that cliff and I'm terrified, I'm shivering because I know that you know 100 feet away somewhere, uh, I'm terrified because I could suddenly fall and, and magically end up 100 feet away from where I'm standing and then this could be detrimental to my health. That would be an irrational fear. Now this is an example, okay? Don't try to read too much into it. Just understand the, understand the difference between rational fears and irrational fears. If, um, you know, if, if a dog happens to be afraid of certain things, you have to break him down and realize, should the dog be afraid of this thing? And a lot of times the answer is, yeah, that, that would make sense. The animal should be afraid of being 10 feet from a railroad with a train going at full speed. The dog should be concerned of being close to traffic where just cars are just zooming by. Right? These are things that, yes, a dog should rightfully be concerned about. But should the dog be concerned about you know, trains when it's you know, a few hundred feet away? Should the dog be concerned of vehicles when it's about a few hundred feet away? Now we're looking at potentially irrational fears. And why is that important? It's important because they affect the quality of life of the animal. So now we want to change these associations. We want to change these condition responses, which this is now in the realm of classical conditioning. So how do we do this? 
let's break down the word counter conditioning. Counter means opposite. Conditioning means learning or teaching. So we want to teach the dog to have the opposite counter, okay? The opposite experience of the emotions that it feels when it sees that trigger, that's counter conditioning. We want it to feel completely different than how it feels now. Now let's think about systematic desensitization. If we break that down, systematic means methodical, gradual, right? Desensitization means uh, sensitization uh, gradually gets chipped at, right? Little by little, that's what desensitization means. We want to take away some of that sensitization that the animal has to the trigger. So how do we achieve this? Uh, I'm going to go back to my invisible line in the middle. Imagine there's a line right down the middle. On this side of that line, there's the trigger. On this side of the line, it's the animal. Now on this side of the line, this is the safety zone. On this side of the line, this is the danger zone, right, for the animal, for the animal's perception at least. So in flooding, remember, we bring the dog in and we operate from this side of, the, of that line. That's flooding. To get more details, watch that video. In systematic desensitization and counter conditioning, what we do is we move this line closer and closer to the trigger. Now, how do we do that? We do that by having the dog on this side of the line with the trigger on the other side. The dog feels comfortable here. And by having the dog as close to this threshold, as close to this line, critical distance, and giving the dog a lot of good experiences here, right? The dog learns that being here is quite pleasant in the presence of this trigger, which is over here. So then what happens is we move this invisible line closer gradually and closer and closer and closer. And eventually the dog learns this is the systematic desensitization aspect of it, right? We gradually move it closer. Now, counter conditioning can happen when the dog eventually realizes, you know, the trigger um, is there and every time the trigger is there, right, as I get closer and closer, good things happen. Lots of good things happen to the point where the animal can find that trigger and have a completely different response to what it had in the past and go from, I don't like that to, you know, I like it, I actually enjoy it because good things happen. Go back to the example on flooding that I use with the box fan. In that example, I said, if there's a box fan in the room and the dog doesn't want to be in that room at all because it's afraid of the box fan and flooding, we bring the dog in. In systematic desensitization and counter conditioning, we give the dog lots of good experiences just outside of the door. Lots of good experiences just outside of the door. And we do that over and over and over. What will happen is the dog will associate just the outside of the door with good experiences. And then what we do from there is we gradually step just past the door, just barely. And we keep giving the dog lots of good experiences. Eventually, the dog will feel very, very comfortable just past the doorway. And we keep doing this, okay, with the fan in the room. And then we gradually move that invisible line just maybe another step every couple of sessions or so, depending on how fast the dog is moving along. And then gradually closer and gradually closer to the point where the dog is very comfortable with maybe the first half of the room. Lots of good experiences are happening. And then we gradually move that closer and closer. Now this dog feels very comfortable in that room with that box fan going on. And we did this in a very systematic way. And we do this and eventually the dog goes fans on good things happen to me i know it. i can bet on it all right the fans on good things happen all right guys if you want to get a little bit more details a little bit of the longer version of this as well as the longer version of flooding remember go to the website doctrineismypassion.com and sign up for the virtual learning